I just witnessed Charles Leclerc spinning in qualifying for Bahrain in Formula 1. Let's hope that's not a sign of things to come in today's episode. Hello, welcome to Season 2, Episode 5 of Race to the Top. I'm Ian, and in today's episode we do have 24 days uh, to get through, and then of course qualifying for Cape Town, which is uh, the first time we've ever been uh, racing in South Africa in this series. Um, we do have a couple of things to talk about um, in the last episode, uh, qualifying... Oh, I better do this question. I hate doing this. I always start talking and then realise we got the question. Um, qualification was a struggle. You definitely could have done better than ninth out there. Um, I'm not really that concerned. We need to improve our qualifying performance. Um, it's all about the race. I'll give him that one. And our chairman's not too happy about that. Yeah, look, um, in the previous uh, couple of episodes, I have been talking about uh, um, Joey Mawson and whether he's... Uh, you know, worth keeping around. I sort of said I'd give him a couple of days, you know, see what he can do. Um, a couple, couple of days, a couple of races, see what he can do. And then uh, then look at uh, potentially replacing him. But unfortunately, we're not earning that much money uh, per race. As you can see, we're only uh, due to get just over £600,000 a, a race. That's not that much. And if we spend, you know, 400000 per race on a new driver... I don't know how much, how many, many, many extra points they're going to get us. So I don't really think it's it's that worthwhile. Um, so I'm thinking we may keep Joey Morse until the end of his contract, uh, and then, uh, in fact, I'll quickly go and show you because his contract does run out in nine months. So he will be able to finish the season with us um, and see how he does. Because in the previous race, he didn't do too badly. Yes, he crashed out in the first race, but I would have, I'd be interested to see exactly where he was behind Leclerc if he hadn't have crashed out. Whereas um, Charles. Um, obviously didn't crash out and got that 10th place, which I don't think he even would have got that had Winklehock not crashed out uh, in Dubai. So in the last race, they were very close together. So I think I, you know, I'll stick with Joey Mawson for now and and uh, we'll, we'll worry about it at the end of the season just to save a little bit more money because as um, sponsors uh, start coming available, as you can see in two races time, uh, the Speed Hunters uh, contract will run out and we can replace that. Uh, and then we've also got three races in time there for that one, and four races. So there you go. So we've got three sponsorships um, that'll end, which we'll be able to replace during this season and potentially get a bit bit more money in the in the uh, in the coffers. But uh, first of all, what we do have to look at is um, improving our car. We are expecting our gearbox um, that we've been designing. We, we should be getting that quite quite soon um, because as, once again, the gearbox is crucial, and so is deceleration at Cape Town. So that's why we're going to have to keep. Uh, working away on improving these sort of parts. Uh, what I will do is I'm actually going to I'm actually going to replace, uh, put the um, staff allocation on performance on the brakes this time, and we'll work a little bit more on the reliability uh, for the brakes too. And we'll go say, let's go let's go seven three. I think that's probably the best thing to do. Uh, we want to bump the brakes up. We can do the gear gears a little bit more, the gearbox a little bit more. But I sort of figure, well, let's just uh, leave that and see what happens. At this race, because I, the way I'm looking at it is, we're not right up there for for the points. Um, I've lost my train of thought. What was I going to say? I don't know. We, I think you know, ninth place where we are in the standings. Let's have a quick look at the standings in case you've forgotten. You know, as you can see, we, we're on six points, two points, um, uh, four points ahead of Campos, and we're only two points behind uh, Yenza Motorsport. So I mean, really, this is anyone's sort of uh, season. To avoid relegation, you know what I mean? We're not going to be winning the championship, clearly. But I think, you know, one sort of bad result will really see us fall away. Um, I will just have a quick look. Um, if we go back to the car, so we should be getting the new gearbox in a couple of days. And that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm improving the, the brakes. That was my train of thought from before, you see. Um, when we get this new gearbox, I'm going to want to start putting the reliability and um, performance in, uh, improvements on that new gearbox. And most likely I'll give it to uh, Charles Leclerc. Uh, but we have got a couple of bits of mail to get through. So Charles Leclerc's actually been invited to compete in a stock car race over in the States. And he and he did it. He's going to do it. So he's been driving in circles. How hard can it be? So he's actually improved his braking and his marketability. And that lasts 25 weeks. So that will be quite good. That plus five in marketability will really help us with the sponsors later on. Um, but let's keep going. As There we go. Joey Mawson is injured. He's got a black eye. It'll go two weeks. So he's going to carry a black eye into the... Uh, the Cape Town GP, uh, because he was caught fighting in a trendy high-end night spot. This guy, honestly, what is he doing? He's just become wild since he's become a fashionista, and what was he doing 
Now before, I can't remember, he's learning to fly, and now he's getting into to bar fights. Unbelievable stuff. So that's my um, that's my thought process anyway, that uh, we're going to be keeping Joey Mawson around uh, until the end of the season. And then once, uh, once he's... Uh, contracts up, then we can have a better look um, in comparison to Charles Leclerc to see exactly how how good or bad he is as to whether we whether we sort of look for someone of a similar ability to save a bit of money or whether we spend a bit more um, just to help us along. Um, but as you may have noticed, and I'll quickly do that, our gearbox has been finished and we've got performance of 278. Reliability is really really poor on that. Um, but if we go to improve the parts now, you can see it's a much bigger improvement over the the one that we, we had originally. So what I may do is I may just bump off um, the two on that and I'm going to pump it in, sh split the difference actually. I think I might sort of go 5-5 five, five for this. Um, purely, actually, you know what? I'm going to leave that one and I'm going to go 6-4 because we want that reliability to bump right up so we can give it to Charles Leclerc um, later on. In fact, I might even take that off. So they're just, they're just going to be working on that one part um, Put all the put, put all the effort into the performance and the reliability for this average gearbox, um, and we'll most likely give it to Charles Leclerc, um, because I sort of think if, if anyone's going to get points, it's going to be Charles Leclerc, isn't it? So that's that's my reasoning. But of course, we are sort of putting all our eggs in one basket to to a little extent. Um, in fact, we've only got three days to go, so we might not even be able to do it. So let's go full full ten on reliability. We might not even be able to use this gearbox because there just might not be enough time. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, we got the global motorsport thing. I forgot about that. But we do have an upcoming uh, race report. So we are racing in Cape Town, which is a 72-lap race. This is going to be a long one. The lap record is a 112 dead. Expect that to change. And um, on the weather front, things are expected to be dry. There's only a 10% chance of rain. There was only a 10% in the last race, I think. Um, racing engineering is expected to dominate unsurprisingly there and the tire compounds are actually the three lowest ones you got ultra soft super soft and the soft um fairly good track wear and our car's pretty good at that so we should be able to make those tires last i'm thinking probably that middle compound again the super softs might be the best option um but otherwise let's we will have a quick look at the pit crew just to see how they're getting on because you can see we haven't got too many mistake chances there do we but i may sort of swap some of them out like uh, kiyama for instance i may put her back onto the front right just because she can fix the uh, any any damage we accrue. Um, otherwise front jack, rear jack, we may bring in Bahala maybe just to reduce that mistake percent chances just, just a little bit. We do still have to start looking at, at hiring some of these uh, guys. I might do that in the next um, the next race which is where where are we racing next if i can ever get to the arrow we're racing in singapore next and that's forecast to be rain so that might be a good time to start looking at that but we've only got three days to go then uh, until we get to cape town and i believe we're going to have a, a vote yeah we are so we're the vote is replacing the milan um track a with track c Quite frankly, I really don't give a stuff over it. Um, it's not expected to benefit us or or not a, a benefit us. It's, you know, it doesn't affect us at all. So I'm just going to abstain because I'm. I sort of figure getting that extra uh, voting power will help later on. I, I should have a look. Actually, we might have a quick talk about some of the uh, proposed changes. So we've abstained, and it looks like they are. It has been successful. So we are going to be racing in with track A in Milan. Um, but if we go and have a look, some of the next ones are 15 dry tire choices. Um, I get an extra vote, not really bothered. Brutus tyres. Brutus uh, produce performance-focused tyres, allowing slightly more speed around the track, uh, but they're not quite as durable. Again, doesn't really bother me. I sort of just go with what we've got. Short practice sessions, I'll certainly be knocking that down. If only 15 minutes for short practice sessions. Quite frankly, I can see myself abstaining from all of them. But we'll quickly get through to this final day then before we get on to the, uh, the qualifying. And we have got some news here now Antonio Fuoco is a pretty good driver maybe even too good if you catch my drift it would make me feel a lot better if he wasn't around ah now this is going to be the the tricky thing do we upset Joey Mawson who we're, we're basically confirming that we're going to keep him till the end of the season or do we fire our reserve driver I, I think we may have to sort of do what Joey Mawson wants. I don't particularly want to because I don't think Fuoco is that bad, really. He's not. He's not the worst driver, um, comparatively speaking. You can see he's. You know, he's not as good as Joey Mawson in in basically every stat. Um, 
But as a reserve driver, I'm, I'm not that fussed, really. And the good thing about him is he does give great feedback. He gives eight feedback. Joey Mawson only gives seven. And uh, Charles Leclerc gives even less. I think he only gives like three or four is his feedback rating. So, look, I think we, what we might do is we might keep Joey Mawson happy and we'll say, yeah, I'll fire him soon. I don't particularly want to do that. But if, if it keeps Joey Mawson happy, then that's the important thing because we're keeping him till the end of the season. And I don't want to see him... Uh, too upset because hey every point counts and if if the difference between him being happy and not happy is 10th and 11th place I'd rather he was on the uh, on the correct side 10th place and picking up a point so let's get into Cape Town then as eventually I thought it was going to load up but there it is that's what I wanted to see so we are track A I think there's only one track there is only the one track here in, uh, in Cape Town as you can see 72 laps um, crucial gearbox crucial brakes which is the only two things that, that aren't spec parts as you remember and uh, Joey Morse has still got a black eye which is something that we're going to have to worry about um, we're going to have to worry about sponsors we are going to change our parts depending on how good our uh, gearbox is for reliability. So it's only at 56%. I don't know if I want to risk that gearbox on Charles Leclerc's car because that's very, very low. But at the same time, that extra performance boost will be huge. Oh, I think, you know what? I'm going to hate this, but I kind of think we leave it as is. We, we don't put the gearbox in. The gearbox will come in again in Singapore. Um, and then again in Munich, and I don't know after Munich, let's have a quick look, um, it's useful in Guildford. So I, I say we leave this, let's bump it up a bit more um, and then put it in a Charles Leclerc's car for um, for the next race in Singapore. And I think Joey Mawson, you know, he's, he's going to miss out because, you know, I, I'm not too fussed about that. So I think by using it, you know, I don't want to put it on Leclerc's car just yet because if he crashes out because of a gearbox failure, then... It's wasted points, and we need every point we can get. We sort of—that's a bit of a dilemma, really, that we have to make. But I think that's the correct choice. And um, I'll see you for qualifying, which I believe is going to be cloudy. There you go. So here we are for qualifying then, and I must admit, yesterday's practice session went pretty damn well. We got a lot of sort of useful information out of this. Um, we did manage to get a lot of um, practice knowledge, as you can see. We managed to do soft tyres, the super softs, uh, which were the, the two hardest compounds. The ultra softs are the, the softest, and we managed to get a 10% performance increase in our uh, race trip, which is fantastic stuff. Um, something to look out for. Joey Mawson was, I think he was 11th um, at the end of it. Um, you know, it was sorry. I, 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 let me start again because I'm already I'm stuttering here because I'm so excited about the qualifying. Um, Joey Mawson was 11th on uh, the second hardest compound, which was the Super Softs, um, whereas Charles Leclerc uh, went around on soft tyres and he was about 19th on the grid, something like that, at the end of it. Um, Things to, to keep in mind as we go into qualifying, we've got Rubens Barrichello for racing engineering. Um, as We'll have a quick look at the standings. Uh, Rubens Barrichello uh, was, was set the fastest time, but his teammate Malia was actually behind Joey Mawson. Now, uh, Malia did have the hardest compound. He was setting times on the soft tyres, but he was um, about, I think he was two, two one-hundredths down on Joey Mawson's time, and Joey Mawson's only had got the uh, the super softs, not the uh, ultra softs. So that's quite promising. Um, the cars to watch out for, I think, is going to be Trident Racing. Uh, Trident Racing were, were very, very poor. They were right down the back. Um, I, I don't know which one it was, uh, which driver it was, but one of them was setting a time on ultra softs, and uh, Joey Mawson beat him on just the, the normal compound. Admittedly, we don't know what sort of engine modes and fuel level and all that sort of stuff they were running at, but that's something to bear in mind. Um, our biggest rivals, though, Campos, they were right up there. They were sort of fourth and sixth, something like that. They were setting times on ultra softs uh, and the super softs, but that's a bit of a concern for us because uh, Joey Mawson was about two tenths down on them, um, and he was setting similar on the same tyres, and he was sort of two tenths down, so that's a worry. And uh, Yenza, or Jenza, however you say that, Motorsport, they were the same. They were a, a bit ahead of us. Uh, one of them was, one of the drivers was below. I'm guessing it's Lorandi because he's right down there. Um, Lorandi, I'm assuming it's Lorandi, um, he, he was setting time on soft tyres, so that's something to, to bear in mind. But this is going to be quite a tight race. Um, all the tyres are actually very, very similar um, in terms of, uh, of length, uh, the, how long they can last for before they start to degrade. Um, as you can see, we managed to get pretty much um, excellent feedback for everything. Speed balance for both Mawson and... Uh, 
uh, the other one, Leclerc, that's his name, uh, was only great. We didn't manage to do too much. But if we have a quick look at the tyres, as you can see, the Ultra Softs are expected to last no longer than 25 laps. Um, and if we go to the Super Softs, they're, they're expected to last 41, but the Softs are expected to last 44, only three extra laps. So I think what most people are going to do is most people are going to avoid the Ultra Softs unless there's a... Um, a safety car then they may sort of change strategies a little bit um, it all depends on where we qualify I'm most likely going to start us on the soft tyres um, and then maybe go softs and then super softs or maybe super softs and then softs that's that's my theory anyway um, but the ultra softs I'm sort of going to avoid them because they only last 25 laps it's a 72 lap race you remember so if you go ultra softs I don't think there's enough time in the ultra softs to make a two stopper work I've done my quick calculations. I've got my pen and paper down here. There, there you go, rustling the paper. I've got my done my quick calculations. It doesn't look like the uh, a two stop on the ultra softs is, is worth it. But enough of me waffling. Let's get stuck stuck into the uh, into the qualifying, which is expected to be no more than dry dry and cloudy. So what we will do is I'm going to be able to send them out um, twice uh, because we're not going to we can happily burn through two sets of ultra softs. I'm, that's why I'm sort of focused on the uh, the super softs and the softs during practice because I figure once the race starts I'm not going to even use these ultra softs so I might as well burn through two of them and let the drivers go out two times set a bank lap the first time and then go for it right at death so we'll send out uh, Leclerc first because he is the faster of the two drivers and uh, we'll quickly send Morrison out as well we'll give him a bit of a breather uh, so he's not stuck in the turbulent air of Leclerc and it doesn't look like too many people are going out well actually I take that back it looks like uh, Leclerc's going out he's going to be setting the fast the first fastest lap I don't know who that is behind but I think that's Ruben Barrichello I'm guessing yeah it is so Ruben Barrichello who was quickest in practice um, he's going to be right behind Leclerc so this is going to be really interesting to see how much time we actually lose and as you can see, Rubens Barrichello is really closing in on him. This is a fantastic circuit, by the way. I love these sort of street circuits. I'm a real street circuit guy. Um, and so this will, this will be a fantastic race. You can mark my words on that one. Um, but let's focus on what we should be doing. Qualifying is number one at the moment. It's a real twisty, uh, tight circuit. There is a couple of long straights, though. I didn't actually see Leclerc, uh, but Mawson managed to perfect his tyre temperatures, overheated his brake temperatures, though. Um, so we'll quickly cut back and uh, show Leclerc. We don't want to be watching Barrichello because he's the enemy, and we're not even battling him anyway because he's he'll be off into the distance uh, on the race start. But Leclerc's got a little bit of traffic ahead of him. As you see, Winklehock has set the fastest first sector. And Leclerc's not too far down. He's, he's let's say, one-tenth down in that first sector. That's not too bad. I'd like it a little bit more. Mawson, though, he's way off the pace. That's something to be really, really mindful of. As you can see down the bottom there, he's, look at that, 1.6 seconds down. Leclerc's doing very, very well. As uh, Verline's gone fastest in the first sector. Leclerc crosses the line with a 110 dead. And uh, Barrichello a second behind him, though. Fantastic stuff from Leclerc so far. Winklehock has just stolen pole, but we are maintaining second place with Leclerc at the moment. Mawson's gone across with a 111.4. He's so far down. He's way behind Leclerc in time. He's 1.3 seconds off Leclerc's time. What is going on there? After the fantastic performance he did in the previous race, now he's going to be starting right at the back again, so he's going to have to do a little bit of work, unfortunately. Um, I did manage to look in practice. Sometimes I keep forgetting, and sometimes I don't even mention it. Um, it'll take, it takes about 90 seconds to get around uh, on the outlap, so we will be able to send these guys out uh, right at the death. I'll send Leclerc out perhaps a fraction earlier just to see what he can do. But in saying that, maybe sending Morrison out might be the better option. Uh, just to get him going. The, actually, no, what? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with what I originally said. We're gonna send Mawson out last, um, so that he's gonna have the the most evolved track. As you can see, look at the uh, the track grip. Look, it's really gripping up right towards the end there. But now we just sort of play the waiting game. So Winklehock and Verline for Sauber, unsurprising. Look at the very little time separating them. Then there's a big sort of drop off between uh, Montero, Albon, Leclerc up in fifth place. That's excellent. Imagine how much better he would have been had we put that new gearbox in. He might have even been sort of third, but you know, you can't sort of worry too much about that sort of thing. Stippler, who I originally said, oh, we're going to be battling these guys, MP Motorsport, he's up in sixth place, but his teammate King's right down the bottom uh, in 14th. So they're, they're quite similar to us. They've got obviously a really, really good driver, and then they've got a really, really poor driver. Um, but Mawson, he must have stuffed up. I didn't see if he had team radio um, during his lap, because he's so far off the pace, 1.7 seconds off the pace, nearly 1.8 seconds off the pace, and he's four-tenths away from Mauya in 19th. 
So something has gone seriously, seriously wrong on Mawson's car. We're just going to have a quick look, just double check to make sure there's no rain. This is none forecast, I don't think. Um, but Giotto is now setting, I believe that's his second lap then. Giotto is going around for his second lap. And he's way off the pace. He's half a second down already as well. So we don't have to worry too much about him with Russian time. Uh, Montero up there as well. He's coming around and he's not going to be improving on his time by the looks of things. And with sort of three minutes ten to go, I think we now have to start looking at sending the cars out, don't we? As I say, it takes about 90 seconds to get around. I sort of think around two minutes 30. That's when I'm going to send Leclerc out. Uh, Mawson, I might just hold him off so he crosses the line. I'm going to be cutting it fine, but I figure he's in last place. We've got nothing really much to lose uh, because Leclerc I don't I'm really really pleased with him he's still got a lot of work to do because all these cars behind that are setting times they're going to be improving because the track is evolving so let's send Leclerc out now on fresh ultra softs and whilst we wait for him to go out we can see if anyone else is improving it looks like a couple of guys are improving but they're a long way off the pace like Jeffrey for instance he's a second down on Leclerc's time and he's just said he's improved on his time but hasn't moved he maintains 17th and now we'll send out Mawson we've got a minute 53 to go that should be more than enough time should give him sort of 20 seconds to get around um extra really should give it it's a good buffer i think and we'll keep an eye on the uh the temperatures of leclerc's car as well so Bichon has done a very very good lap and that's uh, relegated leclerc to sixth place Bichon, i'm very very impressed with that time he's only just over a tenth down on the two salvers but you know we need to worry about ourselves rather than who's up the front don't we and we're not battling with those sort of guys we're battling some of the uh the people at the back uh, Mazepin, we've got to keep an eye on him. Um, but let's have a look then. So Leclerc is starting his flying lap now. Let's see if he can improve on his time at all. With a slightly more evolved track, I'm really, really hoping that he can bump up a little bit more. So Mawson's perfected his tyre temperatures, but again has overheated his brakes. And Leclerc is five tenths down already, six tenths down now. I don't think he's going to be improving that time, unfortunately. And he's going to be slipping and slipping away. That's really unfortunate. But we will keep an eye on Mawson's time, and we'll quickly have to cut to him once we realise Leclerc's out of the running for anything. He's a second down, so he's not going to be improving on his time. Mawson is just under five uh, tenths down. He's just under half a second down, as the qualifying is now ending. So this is his only lap. He's improving on his time. Um, Leclerc's not happy. He's really, really upset with that time. I was too. That first lap was amazing. If only he did that at the end of this session, who knows where we could have finished. But Le Mawson is improving on his time, and he may just be behind Leclerc as he's going to cross the line now. He moves up into 14th place. That's not great, but that's sort of where I expected him to be because that's where he has been the last couple of races. And he was sort of 17th in Dubai, and I think he was sort of 15th or 16th in Tondela. So he is making slow improvements. And Leclerc in ninth place, hey, look, it's a points position uh, to start the race. Barrichello does get pole, though, over the two Saubers, but not by much of a margin, is it? And his teammate, where is his teammate? Maui is right down there. I didn't, I didn't quite see where he was, but he's sort of down in 16th, I think. Let's have a quick squiz. Yeah, he's down in 16th. Racing Engineering, they were expected to do really, really well. And they're down in 16th, but they have got Rubens Barrichello on pole. So that will be interesting. So it is Marcus Winkelhock behind him with Pascal Verlund for Salvo Motorsport. They, they're the big guys to worry about. Uh, Campos Racing, I actually said, we don't need to worry about Bichon, but I forgot he is Campos Racing, isn't he? So that's actually a disaster for us. But his teammate Mazepin down in 19th, that's, that's uh, you know, calmed me a little bit because Bichon set a real blistering time there to be up that high. Um... I'm going to say Jenza Motorsport. That's how I'm going to pronounce them from now on. Um, they're 11th and 15th, so we're going to be battling with them uh, quite a lot, I think, this season. And Trident Racing, I told you how badly they did in practice. They haven't really done much either. They're 13th and 20th. So watch out for them tomorrow um, because hopefully... I don't even know where they are on the standings. I'll be interested to see if, you know, if we can... Uh, the way this season's sort of evolving, Trident might sort of drop into that sort of back bottom three and we might be battling them later on in the season. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you pop a big thumbs up on there for me. It does a world of good for the channel. And I'll see you tomorrow for the race in Cape Town. And uh, let's see if we can have same old, same old, just squeezing into the points and keeping us just above that drop zone in ninth place.